A summary of the Museum of Modern Art's mission statement explains, The MoMA is a place that fuels creativity, ignites minds, and provides inspiration. With extraordinary exhibitions and the world's finest collection of modern and contemporary art, the MoMA is dedicated to the conversation between the past and the present, the established and the experimental. Our mission is helping you understand and enjoy the art of our time. To understand the MoMA, we must first have background on what is modern art and how it came to be. What caused the modern art movement? The movement was from around 1850 to about 1970. It began due to the Industrial Revolution. The changes in manufacturing, transportation, and technology affected the social, economic, and cultural conditions of life. The steam engine and railroad made it easier for people to travel. This expanded people's worldview and access to new ideas. Prior to the Industrial Revolution, most artists were commissioned by wealthy patrons or churches to create artwork. How is modern art defined? Artists became inspired by, by real people, places, and their ideas. Artists broke away from traditions. Artists took new approaches to their art making by experimentation, abstraction, the use of color, personal emotions, the use of non-traditional materials, expression, and exploring the unconscious. There is a wide range of art created under the modern art umbrella. Now that we have an understanding of modern art, we will explore the history of the Museum of Modern Art the education aspects, and how the museum has changed over time to maintain its relevance in today's society. We can credit the creation of the Museum of Modern Art to the daring ladies, Miss Lily P. Bliss, Mrs. Cornelius J. Sullivan, and Mrs. John D. Rockefeller, Jr. They wanted to create an institution that broke away from traditional museums and focused solely on modern art. A. Conger Goodyear, Frank Crowninshield, Paul Sash and Josephine Boardman Crane were the original trustees who also played an integral role in the beginning of the Museum of Modern Art. Alfred H. Barr, Jr., the museum's founding director, wanted the MoMA to help people understand and enjoy the visual arts of our time, and the museum would help provide New York with the greatest museum of modern art in the world. These seven art patrons had the resources, knowledge, and passion to advocate for this type of art that had no place in the United States at the time. With the help of Barr, they were able to open in a turbulent time of society just 10 days after the stock market crash of 1929. On November 8th, the MoMA receives its first public visitors with the exhibition Cezanne, Gauguin, Seurat, Van Gogh. The first brochure created by the Museum of Modern Art describes goals, purposes, reasons, and focuses for the first two and a half years of the institution's existence. One excerpt states, The ultimate purpose of the museum will be to acquire from time to time, either by gift or by purchase, a collection of the best modern works of art. A second goal for the museum was, in time, the museum will expand beyond the limits of painting and sculpture in order to include departments devoted to drawing, prints, and other phases of modern art. Mentioned twice in the brochure is how the museum will exhibit works of art by living artists. This brochure was the first published statement by the founders. In a sense, it is an early mission statement helping to inform where the museum is going and why are they making certain decisions. While there is no mention of education in the first brochure, the museum was founded as an educational institution and maintains these goals today. In 1944, founding director Alfred Barr presented a restatement of the museum's purpose. The primary purpose of the museum is to help people enjoy, understand, and use the visual arts of our time. Together they indicate the museum's primary function, which is educational in the broadest, least academic sense. The current mission statement is wide-ranging and covers many topics. A recap of the mission statement, as it currently states, explains the museum's focus. In sum, the Museum of Modern Art seeks to create a dialogue between the established and the experimental, the past and the present, in an environment that is responsive to the issues of modern and contemporary art, while being accessible to the public that ranges from scholars to young children. Steps taken to educate the public on modern art started early in the museum's history. As early as 1932, museum staffers gave lectures to students and other groups by appointment only. Also in 1932, when they moved to their second museum space, they opened the museum's first library with some 2,000 volumes. 
Lastly, artists were invited to lecture at the museum. Thomas Hart Benton is the first artist to speak at the MoMA on December 15, 1932. In 1937, Victor Diamco is hired as director of the Education Project. The program is aimed to teach art and art appreciation to high school students. Ruth Olson is also hired as the first lecturer to give gallery talks on a regular basis to museum members and the general public. In 1942, the MoMA starts holding the Children's Festival of Modern Art. Children ages 3 to 12 are invited to play games and make art surrounded by the artworks from the museum's collection. In 1970, MoMA started providing touch tours for the blind and visually impaired. In 1971, the museum launches the Museum's Access Project, a program for the hearing impaired. In 1991, the MoMA starts publishing the journal Studies in Modern Art to encourage scholarship related to the museum's collections and programs. Edited by curator John Elderfield, each volume focuses on a single topic. In 2005, they began publishing Educator Guides, using the museum's art collection to teach art history in, co in connection with history, language arts, and visual arts meant for school teachers. Currently, the MoMA has extensive educational programs. These include lectures, many types of classes for all ages, workshops, professional development for educators, tours, etc. As an art educator myself, I use the MoMA's learning website for many of my classes. The site offers searching options by artists or themes and has history, activities, and lessons about modern art. The MoMA's educational mission has been consistent throughout the institution's existence. One important change the MoMA had to face was the end of modern art. While technically the, the movement ended in the 70s, the MoMA has maintained relevancy by upholding a focus on contemporary art and artists. Concentrating on the living artists has been important since the very first, first brochure they published. In 1971, PS1 was founded by Alana Heiss. PS1 was created as a nonprofit contemporary art institution, created not as a collecting institution, but devoted to new ideas, emerging artists, and to display the most experimental art. In 2000, PS1 joined forces with the MoMA. 2010 completed this merger. Modern and contemporary art pushes the boundaries and can be misunderstood or can make people feel uncomfortable. This is one reason why education is so important to the museum. The MoMA honors the great modern artists of the past, and MoMA PS1 is on the cutting edge of the contemporary arts scene. The MoMA started in a rented six-room suite of galleries and offices on the 12th floor of the Hexler building at 5th Avenue and 57th Street. In 1932, leased from John D. Rockefeller Jr., the MoMA moves from the Hexler Building to a townhouse at 11 West 53rd Street. 1938, 11 West 53rd Street and adjacent structures were demolished to build a new sleek and modern MoMA. Designed by architects Edward Stone and Philip Goodwin, the glass, white marble, and industrial-looking buildings was intentional against the masonry townhouse buildings that surrounded the new MoMA. The MoMA is still located on 11th West 53rd Street today, but went through many expansions in 1951, 64, 77, and again in 84. In 1997, Yoshio Tanguchi was chosen for the newest MoMA remodel and renovation. Demolition began in 2000, with the new building opening in 2004. The Dorset Hotel and two townhomes came down to make room for this expansion. Only parts of the original MoMA were saved. The Bauhaus staircase is used to connect galleries as well as the Goodwin Stone fa facade was restored to become the entrance to the film center. In 2011, the MoMA bought the Folk Art Building, which saved the institution from defaulting on their debt. The Folk Art Building was demolished in 2014. The facade of the building was dismantled and will be preserved. As an important pillar in the art community and in the city of New York, the MoMA demolishes modern buildings that could potentially be repurposed or moved. While they are preserving art from the modern artists, they do not seem to put the same importance on architecture. I think it is important for the MoMA to be careful with the future of their building projects, to follow their own mission, which is to maintain the conversation from the past to the present.